This is the future of Mercedes. Follow me, Thomas and Autogovili here with a look at the Mercedes EQXX. This shows us design, technology, efficiency and future materials probably for most or all electric vehicles at Mercedes. And you can see here in the front, it's first of all all the way closed for the best wind efficiency. Then the daytime running light goes all the way through. Two-dimensional Mercedes star here in the front and really tiny details. You can see it there and there. Just tiny holes to measure the wind speed and we can later on see that also on the interior. Really cool thing. And here also once again two-dimensional Mercedes star pattern. From the front it looks like a yeah, like a race car. A little bit reminds us also of the Jaguar XJ220 maybe or something. The wind is just getting in the lower part for cooling and then it's getting out here and you can <laughs> really, really so it's not fake here oh i can almost disappear in there with my arm so um and then the wind comes out here again once again for the best wind flow and in the front the car is you know the widest and it's almost like a like a raindrop for the most efficient design it's supposed to have an electric range of a thousand kilometers or 600 miles and thus also a very good efficiency of less than 10 kilowatt hours on one kilometers. That's less than 16 kilowatt hours on 100 miles. Well, if we calculate that in an ICE, so in combustion engine terms, it would be something about one liter of fuel on one kilometers or some 235 MPG US. That's of course really impressive. And how did they achieve that here? For example, also closed wheels, 20 inch wheels. They're all the way closed, but have this you know, classic wheel spoke design. And then you can see here, even these details. So the painting on the tires and also the, you know, the, the, the font right here, it's actually, you know, not that high. So it's also more wind efficient, really cool. Then there's, there's an air breather right here. So that also goes through. I can, you know, touch my hands in here. So also once again, the airstream is led right here because at autobahn speeds, like 130 kilometers an hour or some 70, 80 miles an hour, two third of, you know, of the energy that is being lost, so to speak, is because of the wind resistance. That's where this car is kind of attacking it. And how does it do it? You can see in the front, it's actually wide. And then to the rear, it gets even more narrow and narrow and narrow, big shoulders for design purposes. But the key to this, you know, wind efficient, like the, the coefficient is actually 0.18 it's kind of the rear right there. You can see here, this finishes this raindrop design. And when it's going like more than 40 miles an hour, more than 60 kilometers an hour here in the lower part, you can see the rear spoiler, the lower spoiler is actually going out. It has a length of about 197 inches or five meters. By that, it's even a little bit longer. And this is once again improving how the wind is flowing or kind of leaving that vehicle. The thing is really, if you also come to the rear, it is a very unusual design here, especially in the rear. Once again, light strip going all the way through right here. And you can hardly see any gaps. It reminds us really of some decades ago where race cars were built in this very way to be most efficient and to be the fastest on the road. In this case, really, it's about getting the highest range with actually low weight as well. So the battery pack here is only 100 kilowatt hours net. That's not actually, that's not so large if you consider that high range. And once again, it's more about the efficiency. It's not about building the battery even bigger or something. The battery weight, by the way, is less than 500 kilograms because of new cell technology. And this is now a quite long car actually but they say they can also fit the same technology in smaller vehicles like a new generation of an EQA or the EQB. So this technology here in this vehicle here today will also play a major role for smaller electric vehicles at Mercedes. And of course, we already know they are going all electric anyway. Another aerodynamic detail is here, the side mirrors, you see they are completely integrated. There's hardly any gap and that's why also the whole mirror has to be moved and not the glass on the inside. One feature is coming later is also a solar roof. It will cover the whole roof actually and will bring you up to 25 kilometers or 15 miles of range per day at a 
sunny day or something. By the way, the overall efficiency will be 95% of the energy from the battery will be put to the wheels in going forward. To compare that one, for example, with an internal combustion engine, it's just one third of the energy that is going to the wheels in a, you know, ideal case. So most combustion engines are even less efficient. Then also other technology details, you maybe know that also from Tesla, from these Giga castings, similar technology they are also using here. Now, Mercedes says that the lower part of, of the body, of the internal body, is made from one piece and then also in a so-called bionic design where you can see holes in the structure to once again reduce the weight, just use material there where it's actually needed. And these holes are once again then filled by recycled materials made from waste. So this car is also as sustainable as possible, the least use of resources by maximum efficiency, both in materials and also while going forward. Here, by the way, I have this you know, augmented reality uh, iPad here. And uh, once again, you can see how the wind is being channeled over that vehicle and also how the rear part plays the vital role for that and we can also change the view um, you can by the way see how the a pillar how the wind is being directed right there and even more interesting hey what's going on with the wheels we can even get closer to it um, and the thing is although there is this optimization you know by the wheels that are closed and also here the, the channeling of this you know air curtain this view here shows these are basically the losses where it's not ideal. But if we would compare it to a normal vehicle, it would be even more extreme. So although you have these all, all these measures here at the wheels, you can see that you do lose a lot, you know, of efficiency still with the wheels. If we go further here, you can see hardly anything anymore at the A pillar and then at the rear also just a little bit. But this, what you can see here, is already highly optimized. Heading towards the interior, we already know these door handles from the EQS or from the EQE. And then, yeah, <laughs> it's a concept stage. So, and then here on the interior, really interesting, all these materials. First of all, this is the known dynamic car, the microfiber surface, now also with a high recycling share, about 70%. Then this is completely new, this is vegan silk. So this is a silk-like material, you can see it's also kind of shiny, but it's completely 100% plant-based. So just this strap here, really interesting. Then here, this is kind of like a three-dimensional surface. Here, you can see here the integration of the window. And this is um, here, once again, these bionic structures where you don't leave, where you just leave the material as it's needed, actually. Then also recycled fabrics here in the lower part, and no, just, you know, plastics or something. So this has a really nice fabric structure. And then you can see here this futuristic interior. I mean, it on the one hand comes close to the EQS or EQE we see already, but here is even more futuristic. Here nice also with the Dynamica microfiber covering of the steering wheel. And then even new materials. So this one here on the steering wheel around, you can see it's an animal leather alike surface. And here as well on the seat. But this is actually with a high share of cactus so they actually grind cactus and from these fibers from the cactus they can make an, uh, a leather rat and this is really cool it's really soft looks cool feels good and another material choice is here the inserts right here this is um, from uh, mycelia so this is then basically the roots of a mushroom and then they can also make a leather rat from it so different material innovation the thing is, the whole interior is animal-free, more sustainable, less use even than of petroleum. For example, the floor here, this is then made from 100% already uh, bamboo fibers, so all plant-based, all natural. And of course, later on, you can also recycle it or, for example, um, you know, when it's made from bamboo fiber, it wouldn't be such a problem then you know, just putting plastic somewhere. So this is really, really interesting what they did there. This is definitely way to go. Sitting here on the inside, it's really cool with this um, blue and white atmosphere. So really inspiring, definitely. It is a sporty seating position, definitely. Feels like driving concept vehicle. And you can see here, we have a nice animation. This one here is a 47.5 inch screen from left to right. It's one screen that goes all the way through. 8K resolution. The uh, voice here of the MUX is more natural now and you can have different animations. This is the normal sp uh, speed. Here you have the capacitive 
hashtag capacitive BS buttons on the steering wheel. We know that already, so there's not so much concept alike. But maybe you heard something from the speakers already. So in the seats here, we have integrated speakers. So this reduces energy um, consumption once again. And it's also, you maybe know this fight, you know, with you driving, and then you have your passenger next to me, uh, next to next to you, and then you're not really you know in line with what music is being played. When the speakers are in the seats, we already had with, with some concert vehicles, you can listen to different kinds of music at the same time. Yeah, man, when you think about 3D surround sound, maybe it's not that good because you just have the, uh, the speakers integrated in the seats, but it has other advantages then. Yeah, one more perspective of this very cool futuristic interior. It's part that is kind of like, you know, current and others that are more futuristic, definitely, you know, this really wide screen. You can here see the animation of the vehicle as well. So for example, in the GPS system, in this huge screen, you will also have the animations of, you know, your, your surrounding. For example, that you can see the city with 3D buildings and so on. And even, you know, where the sun is actually standing, this is calculated in real time. So the image on the screen will show you the correct standing of the sun at this moment. You can see it here, for example, on the, on the right side. At the same time, you might think, what a big screen. Is that combinable with efficiency? Actually, yes, because when the screen is black somehow, it's really kind of like off, so to speak, because they use um, different zones inside this LED screen where they really do not use any energy when the screen is black at that point. So they just use energy where you can actually see an animation at the moment. And this is once again to increase the efficiency also from what is being consumed on the interior. And here, by the way, then we can also see you know, how strong the wind is from the outside. And it will even calculate where the wind is coming from and then calculate the best route, the most efficient route. Here also with the simulation of the solar roof that is to be included at a later stage. And what's also really interesting, once again here with the wind speed, you can see here this, this raindrop form again of, of the vehicle. This is really what has the crucial factor here. This is like as it would be in the wind channel. So this is how the wind is being directed. Also the floor of the vehicle is completely even. This is also one of the crucial elements, how it is so efficient actually. The back seats are by the way, just for show in this case. And yeah, I would definitely smell these time code comments com uh, coming. Thomas in the back seat, but in this case, I think, although the car is quite long, not too much space here in the rear. Yeah, but it looks also fancy, right? And another bionic piece is this one here. This is actually the wiper holder for the front windscreen. And then you can see, once again, they save weight and save material by just leaving gaps right here. And then once again, they are filled for um, noise insulation and so on by lighter materials but the metal material use is then once again reduced and indeed it looks kind of you know natural alike also once again like we see with you know with mushroom uh, forms maybe with beehive things so really inspired by nature nature still knows what to do best and this is an example how the formula one racing team also helped the development here this carbon fiber casting for the electric motor this is only in the rear so rear real driven and by that it's hold tight and also of course crash safe crash safety proof as well and this is a glass fiber spring they are actually built in the vehicle so no traditional metal coil they still await the results of the real driving test for that, if it's supposed to work or not. This is something they want to test here. There will be the additional damper running um, you know, alongside that, of course, but looking forward how that one actually feels while driving. So what's already clear is this front design here, we will more or less see in future Mercedes vehicles, definitely where the typical Mercedes grill is actually gone and probably also where the star is kept in a two-dimensional side. But maybe also illuminated once again, we'll see about that. As the car here itself, well, it rather depends on you what your feedback is. If you think this design is also okay, or if it's work, or if it's maybe even cool, could this be, for example, a future all-electric CLS or something? But what's definitely clear is that 
the elements we see, for example, also closed wheels, we already see somewhat today on the EQS and the technology details like the efficiency models and also the battery technology, we will definitely see in future Mercedes vehicle. So this is definitely a big technology carrier and also from the whole sustainability aspect and also, of course, the interior we've seen, definitely the vehicles and Mercedes will be more wind efficient. They will be more efficient as for the electric motor, for example, so also less friction inside the electric motors. The range will be probably yeah, it will double, double actually from nowadays to the future cars and they will also be animal free on the interior. This is what we can definitely take already right now. Audi, for example, also has their approach, how they actually see their future vehicles and we also have a video of a future BMW, we see you there to compare it.